Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel I post a ton of anti-MLM content. I will link a playlist right here. At this point there's almost 70 videos on it. Very, very bingeable. And right now I'm pretty consistent about posting at least three videos a week. So if any of that kind of content sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, consider liking this video. All of those things really help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. For today, I have another Monet Zoom call for you. This link was sent to me. I snuck into it last week. And this is a Zoom call hosted by three of the people in the top rank of Monate. They reference it several times in the Zoom call. They call themselves SEDs, which stands for Senior Executive Director. Like I said, this is the top rank of the company. And for some context, 0.01% of people ever make it to this rank. And the median annual income for this rank is right around $800,000. And it's important to know that all of these people have been in the company for several years. In other words, they joined in the beginning. They have massive teams of people underneath them. They make really, really good money, but they sit at that rank that is statistically impossible for most people to reach. They're hosting a really casual Q&A session. I'm under the impression that they do this kind of often where they have a few SEDs host a call and then people will put their questions in the chat box and they will just kind of pick a few at random and answer questions for 30 minutes. And I wanted to show this to you because it really does pull back the curtain and it exposes what the leadership in this company looks like from the top down. And it's showing us what the people at the top are claiming are their keys to success. In my opinion, opinion, these types of calls are completely laughable because we know that making it to the top rank of an MLM is strictly a numbers game and it all hinges on your ability to recruit a lot of people onto your team. So I find it very entertaining to watch them get on a call and essentially make up a bunch of crap and spew a whole bunch of motivational self-help platitudes as a way to like motivate the people in the downline. It's essential that we remember the purpose of this type of call. It's to put these top earners of these companies on a pedestal and it's to give the false hope to the people at the bottom of the company that they can get there too if they just have the secret sauce pretty much. It's a joke, it's a fallacy, it's a facade, it's a lie. So let's watch. Also, I'm filming a couple of videos today and when I have something that I'm reacting to like this where it's one big clip like a Zoom call or a training or something, I like to do my makeup as I'm watching just to save myself a little bit of time on these days where I have a pretty heavy workload because we love efficiency around here. Also, when I've done this in the past, people have asked me to link the things that I'm using. I've finally taken the time to round up all of those links so those will be in the description box. My collection of makeup is very, very tiny. I pretty much do the exact same makeup every single time I film. So all of that will be linked below if you're curious. You guys want to get started? Let's do this. Got my favorite people on here tonight. I've been loving these Q&A calls more than anything because I feel like we're really giving the people what they want um, as opposed to just jumping on and training and maybe you guys aren't getting exactly what you need. So let's get this party started. Totally. I love it. You guys, let's lock in for the next 25 minutes. Give yourself 25 minutes right now to really work your business. You know, just to, uh, to, uh, turn your cameras on, get locked in. Let's focus and let's get started with our first question. I'll take this one from Instagram. I know that I'm already pausing it, but she just said, take these next 25 minutes to work your business, which is alarming to me that they consider sitting on a Zoom call to be work. How is this work? Okay, did you clock in when you join the Zoom call and you're getting paid for every minute you sit here? No, you're donating your time. Everyone on this call took time out of their Wednesday evening to sit here and listen to what these people have to say. And if you're sitting on a Zoom call, you're presumably not selling product, you're not actively recruiting somebody. And those are the only two things you can do in an MLM that translate directly into you making money. And this really does make you wonder what is meant when they say work or hustle or grind. Are you referring to all the time that is spent sitting on Zoom calls, sending cold messages, posting about the product on Instagram, attending company conferences? Because none of those things make you any money. And so calling it work is kind of misleading. All of these things are tasks that you donate your time to in the hope hopes that it will increase your chances of making some money down the road. You're not getting paid to sit here and listen to what the top earners have to say, but you do it anyway because you're hoping for that little nugget of information, that little piece of inspiration that's going to set your business off and it's going to give you the potential to be very successful at selling and recruiting. Um, top three things a leader should be doing weekly for their team. Mm -hmm. Joe, do you want me to answer or you want to go first? I can start. Okay. So I would change the question around. I feel like weekly, I would say more daily because really, and I was reading some questions here on the chat. The key to this business is just repetition. It's the same thing over and over again. So definitely as a leader, I'm huge on filling up my cup first before filling up my team's. 
because that's the only way I'm going to be able to do what I'm asking them to do. So of course, you should be hosting at least minimum one to two trainings a week. And this is even if you have one person under you, or maybe you don't have a team, but you can partner up with a sideline and host a call on a book you're reading or a podcast you heard. So for sure, stay plugged in, hosting one to two calls every single week, What they really mean by this phrase, staying plugged in, is that you need to be continually showing that you are committed to the business. You need to be on every team call. You need to be showing your face on the camera. You need to be responding to messages that you get from your teammates. And it's highly emphasized that you need to be doing all of those things so that when you don't, they know to check in on you because they sense that you're slipping. In other words, you need to continually prove that you are an active participant and those leaders are gonna be keeping a very, very close eye on you because they really need you on their team. If you quit, that creates an entire mess of issues for them and they're going to need to scramble to replace you so that their numbers and their quotas and their paychecks aren't negatively impacted by the fact that you quit. She's also recommending that you're hosting one to two trainings a week, even if you have one person under you. And my question is, what are the qualifications here? I just joined Monate two weeks ago. I signed up my best friend and now I'm supposed to be training her twice a week. By her saying that and by her advising people do that, it's kind of sending the message that nobody really knows what they're doing here. Everyone's just pretending to be boss and therefore they're just pretending to be qualified enough to give business advice. So that's really great. We're off to a solid start with the advice from the top earners here. Also encouraging your team to do personal development because you're doing personal development. So something I love is whenever you hear a good podcast, whenever you read a good book, send it to them. And it shows that not only you're doing it, but you give them some inspiration as to what to listen to and what to read. Because a lot of people coming into this business including when I started, I was like, what, like, where do I start? What do I hear? So make sure you're keeping that motivation going for them. And also I feel like as a leader, you know, people can start doing this on their own and they should, but kind of reminding them, check your back Mm -hmm. office. If you have people going for ranks, remember you need them as much as they need you. So it's not a one way streak here. Remember that you need them as much as they need you. So, I mean, I check my back office at least 20 times a day, but at at least make it a non-negotiable to twice a week, maybe beginning and end. Check your leaders, check the people that are going for rank ups, check who's closed. Some people are 200 points away from hitting a rank and they don't know. So get familiar and get used to pulling those reports because once you pull them and you understand them, the business becomes so much simpler. What she's admitting to here is that if you're going to rank up in Monet, which you have to do if you don't want to be in the bottom 90% losing money, you need your team members to be pulling their own weight. I would love to see what this back office setup looks like. I've never seen it before, but what it's sounding like is maybe it gives you some kind of snapshot about your teammates' performance and what their goals are and how close they are to hitting them. And what I mean by goals is I mean like the quotas that you have to buy and sell and the people you have to recruit in order to hit ranks. Imagine checking your back office 20 times a day to micromanage people to make sure that they're not slacking because your paycheck depends on it. What a terribly miserable way to make money. I love that so much. And I would just add to that. I agree with everything that you just said. I would add to that is like, you want to be building out personal relationships with your team. So like, I'm so big on my one-on-ones and really having my hand in every single one of my frontline business so that I know where they're at. I know where they need my help. And I think keeping those lines of communication open, I always tell my team, listen, I'm not a mind reader. You know, I don't necessarily always know what you need because every person needs something different out of you as a leader. So when you have that communication open, when you know, like what your team loves, like what drives your team, is it money? Is it recognition? Is it the community? Then you know how to lead those people in a different way. Um, Every single person that you bring on to your team is going to require a different version of you. And I think that the best leaders are able to switch themselves to best cater every single person, if that makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm just going through the ones that I'm seeing. So bear with me guys. How do you overcome the fear of talking about the business? Um, I can, I can start with this one. I come from the mental health world. You guys, I had no sales background. I had no experience with Instagram and I was very, nervous and intimidated to talk about this business at first. And I 
really realize that what I think about the business is going to ultimately translate over to who I'm talking to. So the energy that I'm giving, what I think about the business, how I'm working this business, what this business was doing for me and the potential that the business had for me is exactly what I wanted to be talking to people about. So if you sit there and you're like, oh, geez, uh, well, I don't want to annoy people by asking them if they want my shampoo and conditioner or, oh, I'm too nervous to go up to that person and compliment their outfit and potentially get their Instagram. Well, then, you know, that's the energy you're, you're going to put off. People, people want to partner with people who are confident. They know what they're doing and they're excited. Energy sells, right? When I tell you this is the best hairspray you will ever use ever not not guys this also just isn't hairspray you can also put it as a makeup setting spray as well the excitement that someone feels when they're watching you on your story is the same excitement you want them to have when they open up that box when they get their hairspray shipment okay same thing goes with your business makeup setting spray spraying hairspray onto your face. I am cringing at the idea of like how tight and sticky that would make my skin. No, thank you. And let me just take a moment to point out, I screen recorded the chat too. It is full of people being like, wow, really? I had no idea. And they are actually believing her. Does Monate claim that it can be used as a setting spray? No. Would a professional recommend that you use hairspray as a setting spray? No. Is it common sense to spray hairspray on your face? No, but just because somebody at the top rank of this company said so, these girls are gonna do it. It is scary to think how much trust people have at the top rank of these companies just because they are idolized for their position within the pyramid. Aside from the hairspray fiasco, before that she was talking about how you can't be scared or embarrassed to pitch the products or the business opportunity because that's the energy you're gonna give off. And that's gonna read to that potential customer, which I do agree with. If you're timid or if you're unsure of yourself, that's gonna turn a lot of people off. However, going into a stranger's DMs unsolicited to try and sell them shampoo, that is embarrassing. And your confidence does take a hit when so many people repeatedly tell you no. And I recognize that what I'm about to say is kind of harsh, but being in an MLM is not a good look. It is humiliating. Cold messaging, constantly promoting the products, constantly defending against your decision to be in an MLM, constantly giving credit for everything good in your life to a company that isn't even paying you a livable wage, that is humiliating. And I can imagine that it's probably really difficult for people to get over that sense of embarrassment and to portray a sense of confidence anyway, even when they don't fully stand behind the actions that they are expected to take. Get excited about it, get passionate about it, and know your stuff. I used to stay up so late and I was working my nine to five still watching video after video, training after training, immerse yourself in it make the sacrifices and get really, really, really confident in this business and all that it has to offer you and anyone that you're talking to. I love all of that. And like, I like to say like, you are the X factor. We can all say the same exact thing about the business, right? Like we can all have the same exact pitch. We can hit the same exact points, work from anywhere, uncapped income, great products, great community, right? But it's going to come down to you. So I want you guys to think if somebody is going to go into business with you, they have to like you, trust you, respect you, and in some kind of a way, want to be like you, okay? Those are the most important things to think about. When you start embracing those things, guys, you're going to start attracting the right people to you. I was super cocky in the beginning, to be honest with you. I didn't chase people. I presented the opportunity. I was excited about it. But at the end of the day, I was like, listen, I'm going to do this with or without you. Okay. Yeah, of course you're going to do this with or without people because what choice do you have? You can't force people to sign up. So if they say no, your only option is to move on without them. This has nothing to do with cockiness or confidence. That's just called respecting people's boundaries. And when you have that kind of a confidence about yourself and 
people take you seriously, right? And like part of that seriousness isn't just when you're talking about money. People are always watching you. How are you showing up on your stories? How are you showing up when you're going out? How do you handle stress? Are you a person that's always in other people's drama and other people's business, right? These are other things that you have to think about when you think about somebody wanting to go into business with you and you be their mentor, Okay. So a lot of it comes back to us and us attracting the right people through who we become in this business. And I think showing that personal development and showing that growth um, and showing that mindset is some of the most important things that we can demonstrate. Love that. Um, let's see here. This is, I think this is a good one and it's a really important one. The shift from 30K to 60K. So that MM to MMM, um, what was your biggest non-negotiable going from the MM rank to MMM rank? I want to pause it here to give you some context. Here's the compensation plan and the numbers that they're referring to are downline volume quotas that you have to hit every single month. Downline volume is defined as the sum of PV from you and your entire downline, regardless of their title. This is also called organizational volume. So in other words, this is the volume that you and your team have to either sell or purchase every single month to maintain those ranks or to rank up. So if you are at the market mentor MM rank, you and your team have to maintain that quota of 30,000 DV every single month to stay there. If not, you fall. And if you wanna rank up even one more time, that amount doubles. You go from 30,000 a month to 60,000 a month. And then once you're there, you have to maintain that as well. I've been told by former Monate reps that one PV point is equivalent to about $1. So that means every single month, you and your team have to sell or purchase $30,000 of product to keep your rank of market mentor. And as I said, if you wanna rank up just one more time, that amount doubles. You go from $30,000 a month to $60,000 a month. And yes, it is a quota, okay? Monate reps love for some reason to talk about how their company doesn't have quotas, yet their compensation plan has this handy dandy chart full of numbers that outline the monthly quotas that you and your team must hit to maintain or achieve new ranks. It's completely insane. It's not insane that there are quotas. Every single MLM has quotas, but it's insane that they will claim that they don't have quotas. And I think that the person is asking about this particular jump from MM to MMM because that's a significant shift in your rank. According to the income disclosure statement, MMM is the rank where you actually start to earn a pretty solid full-time income. Market Mentor has a median annual income of $32,000 and then it jumps up to $68,000 when you hit MMM. So I would imagine that this is kind of the threshold that a lot of people are aiming for because this narrative of you quitting your traditional corporate job to do Monate full time, that's heavily pushed on you from the moment you join. And according to this reported income, it doesn't look like you can actually achieve a full time income until you make it to MMM. But please keep in mind that even if you do hit that rank, that means that you are in the top less than 1% of the entire company, which is crazy. Clearly, it's very difficult to hit that rank. In other words, it's very difficult to make a full-time income with Monate. Sorry to take you down that little tangent, but I thought that it was important to give some context because the original question was what are the non-negotiable things that you need to be doing in your business if you want to make that jump from MM to MMM? So I feel like, girls, it's the same as going from MMP to SED. You can say the same thing as going from AMM to MM. You're going from 5,000 to 30,000. So stop mm. focusing so much on the numbers and start focusing more on the things you need to do every single day that are going to get those numbers up. So what gets your numbers up? Recruiting, onboarding your girls and training your team, duplicating your business. There's no trick or shift that's to, okay, if I need to go from 30 to 60, I need to work 30 more hours. No, you can work the same amount, you can work harder, you can work less. It's just on focusing on doing the same things that work every single day. So non-negotiables, you need to recruit. You need to continue to grow your team. Recording in progress. Sorry. I don't care you know, if you have five really good girls. Realistically, like I'm a numbers person. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard for five girls to get you to 60,000. You need to grow wide and deep. So the best advice when you're trying to grow and rank up, it's not only you recruit, 
but help your girls recruit. Host lots of potential calls. Host lots, lots of events, even if two people go. That's two people that may or may not sign up, but they now know about the business and the product. And, you know, they can spread the word. I mean, you heard it here first, folks. My job is done. Her answer for how you rank up and make the good money, you recruit. And I love that she gave the example that having only five people on your team is not going to get you $60,000 in sales in a month because that's true. That's very, very true. But that's the quota you need to make good income in this company. It's not realistic for a team of only five people to hit those quotas. So what do you need to do? What's the solution? Recruit more people wide, meaning you personally recruit people and you need to recruit more people deep, meaning the people you recruit, recruit their own. That's it. The training call is over. Okay shut it down. Let's all go home because that's all you need to know. You want to rank up? Recruit. You want to make more money? Recruit. And now that we have a little bit of a deeper understanding of these quotas and how you can hit them, I think that this is a good opportunity to introduce the concept of rank buying, meaning, oh crap, it's the end of the month and I still haven't hit my PV goal. So I'm just going to go onto the website. I'm going to place an order of products for myself so that I can get the points and I can keep my rank. Remember that you can hit these PV points by purchasing and or selling. So what ends up happening is, oh crap, I didn't sell enough this month. I'm just going to finish out the point requirement by purchasing. Yes, this is against Monate compliance. Yes, this does happen for a fact. I will link some Instagram posts below in the description box from the Instagram account, small anti MLM angel. Somebody sent that Instagram account screenshots of text exchanges of Monate top earners telling their teammates what they need to buy so that they can hit their ranks. It was quite literally like, oh, okay team, everyone needs to go and buy a hair oil right now so that we can hit our group volume for the month and so that so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so can rank up. Joining a business opportunity where you are spending your own money every single month just to hold your position is a great way to run yourself into a deficit. So I would say don't focus so much on the numbers just focus on the little things that have worked, the little things that get you to MMP. Because once we start to get around, we stop doing the things that work, that's when we like lose track and lose focus. So non-negotiables for every day should be personal development, showing face on your story, showing face on your team chats, following up, depending how many VIPs you have, you know, once or twice a week with your customers, keeping that relationship open with them and following up with your potentials. Okay. The key is in the follow-up. I would say 95% of the business I close is from following up. It's funny how she's saying that she gets 95% of her recruits by following up with them. But five minutes ago, the other girl was like, I'm doing this with or without you. And if people don't wanna join, I just leave them in the dust. There's already so much contradiction in the advice that they're giving on the same exact call, minutes apart from one another. And today I gave a perfect example. I was talking to Bianca and I had spoken to an attorney about a week ago. She had spoken to a financial advisor about a week ago. And none of them have reached back out to us. And I'm like, do they not want the business? And just for that reason, I kind of don't want to hire them because I'm like, why are they not checking in? You know, the same goes for us. You have to stop feeling entitled that people are going to come to you. Remember, we want them right now. We need to show them what they're missing. So definitely following up, following up every single day and just focus on duplicating and growing your team. Yeah. I agree. And I think like, you know, oh, you agree. Five minutes ago, you gave completely different advice, but now you agree. Okay, cool. You know, my goal always for when I bring someone into the business is getting them to MM. And I try to explain to them, listen, you're not going to bring in $30,000 in sales on your own. But if we have 30 people on your team and everyone can bring in a thousand, which is so doable, we're at MM, you know? So when we think about MMM, 60,000, we're basically just doubling that number, guys. 60 people is not a lot of people to bring in a thousand or you extra train your 30 and everyone brings in 2000 and then the next thing you know you're at 60,000. I don't know if you caught that but she just confirmed that it is a one-to-one -one ratio point values to dollars and she basically just said that if you want to get to the rank of mm you need to have at least 30 people on your team because the monthly quota is thirty thousand dollars and if you have 30 people on your team that means they're each pulling in about a thousand dollars and that's somewhat reasonable and then she said if you want to rank up just one more time to mmm you need to have 
60 people on your team. In other words, you need to have a team of about 60 people if you really wanna make a decent income in this company. And now you see why recruiting and maintaining those people on your team is so important because if you have a $60,000 quota every single month and 10 people quit, the other 50 people on that team now have to somehow absorb that cost. Those remaining people have to work that much harder to now sell that amount of product or unfortunately just eat the cost and purchase it for themselves instead. How do people watch these calls and not run for the hills? If I was in this company and I was listening to these top earners tell me that it is all about recruiting and my ability to rank up and fill quotas relies solely on other people, I would be losing my mind. It's completely a house of cards that can crumble at any moment and I'm sweating just thinking about it. But one of the most important things with this that is key is layered leadership and you not trying to do every single thing on your own. You want to identify your runners. You want to identify your leaders and you want to empower those people so that they're training and they're leading and they're stepping into that leadership light. Um, and that's really how your team starts to take off. And then you're able to start growing out that new business on your front line and growing very, very wide. Perfect. Um, I think this is a good one. Can you give me an example of how you would approach a market partner who continues to ask questions that they can find the answers to in the back office? I've mentioned it before, but I know, or I don't know how to continue saying the same thing without offending. This is an important one because this will get duplicated throughout their team. So Yes. Um, I mean, I can, I can start, um, three before me check three places before you come to me. Right. I always say, I will set you up with every single thing you possibly need to be successful with this business. I want you communicating with me. I want you asking questions, but I also really want to set you up for success. And that means creating that boundary of being self-sufficient in the business. You know, Brit is my upline and there, her and I had many conversations of like, Hey, you know what? Check, check here first. And then if you really can't find it, come back to me. And that was at the time, like, oh, just give me the answer. You know, I know, you know the answer, but it really helped train me to be able to duplicate that down to my entire downline. So that's something that, you know, it starts with you. So you're going to have to have some uncomfortable conversations at times with your market partners, but it will only make you stronger as a business owner and as a leader. So don't be afraid to get a little uncomfortable when it comes to those conversations and it will only help them in the long run. Trust me. It really will. Yeah. Also, I, like tell them, like, I like to tell them like when you look something up yourself and this is not just in this business, this is in life, you're going to remember it more than if it's just fed to you. So at first, especially with the new girls, like Ali said, yes, ask me all the questions. If you're new and you're not bothering me, you're not working. But at the same time, like if they ask a question about the flash sale, I say, have you read the FAQs? You know, the answers are there. Let's look at it together. If it keeps on going, honestly, and I've told them three, four times, like check your resources first. I'm very straightforward with my team. And I say, you know, I'm focusing on my new girls. And if I don't answer for three hours, are you going to wait three hours to get the answer? That usually kind of just motivates them to go and look for it themselves. And once you find the answer once, you're never going to forget it again. So I feel like we need to stop being scared of insulting or offending. Like we're all adults here and we're running businesses. We're not playing games. So, you know, this is, I'm going to help you. I'm going to guide you. Like Ali said, you have all the resources. I'll help you look for it, but also ask, have you tried looking? Yes. I read the FAQs. It's not there. You're right. Sometimes we miss things or they're left out. And that's when your upline can, you know, escalate it. But just be very straightforward. And at times I haven't answered for three hours and they're like, never mind. I found it. And I'm like, that's what it takes. You know, I don't fully disagree. My background is in elementary education. That's just like a classic teacher tactic, ask three before me. And the reasoning behind that is to get the kids to be self-sufficient, to look for the answers themselves, and to not be reliant on other people to hand the answers to them. And yes, it is true that you will retain information better if you seek it out yourself versus if it's given to you. However, I do feel like there's an added component that we need to consider in the context of MLMs, because by them saying this and in the delivery of it, it's giving off this impression of excellence exclusivity. Like I'm too busy. I'm too successful. I don't have time for you and your little questions. And you know what? Honestly, that's probably the truth. This is just more evidence that their teams are so big that they cannot possibly give their attention to everybody who needs it. They genuinely don't have the time to train everyone or to answer everybody's questions. And it's kind of interesting that this conversation is following the previous conversation where they were saying that you need to be checking your back office. You need to be looking at what your team 
teammates are doing. You need to be communicating with them and checking in with them often. And it's like, hmm. So communicate often with your teammates when your quotas are on the line, when your rank is on the line, when your paycheck is on the line, but don't bother answering their questions when their business is on the line and when they need to know how to do stuff. Great. Um, how to keep your team motivated. This is a good one. <laughs> when are we going to learn that that's not a thing, you guys? <laughs> how many SED Q&As are, is it going to take for us to learn that? We can't motivate anybody, right? You know, guys, motivation is just a feeling. At the end of the day, people are going to put into this business whatever they want to put into it. We can only meet people halfway, okay? Um, I always say to everyone, like, I'm the same mentor that to every person that comes into the business, you know, and it's the same thing as the gym. Okay. Cause Allie and I were on this 30 hard challenge. You guys all know about it. Some, some of you guys were on it. Let me just tell you the motivation wore off real quick on day four. <laughs> I was, I was gung ho. And then all of a sudden that motivation was gone and it was either going to come down to having the discipline or not, you know, and it's the same exact thing in our business. We start on the first day of the month. We're so motivated. We're so excited. We just got off a team call with our SED blah, blah, blah. And three days later, everything has turned around. So it's like either you want it or you don't. It's the same thing with the diet, with the gym, with your business, with your, with your relationship. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you feel like you're not motivated in the business, again, I know, I know every question I keep answering, it's like, you have to take a look at yourself, but it really comes back to you. What do you want in your life? Are you willing to make the changes that you need to make to get there? Don't be mad about the things that you don't get for the work that you don't do. It would not be an MLM Zoom call if we didn't blame people for not working hard enough. And success has nothing to do with motivation. It has everything to do with discipline and consistency. And that's really what it what it comes down to. And in terms of trying to motivate other people, you, you, you can't, you know, you can only do so much. And I will say, because I say this to my team all the time, if I wasn't in the group text or I wasn't, you know, answering your texts or your phone calls, you would still know what to do by watching how I work my business on social media. If you just followed what I'm doing daily on my social media, you would start to have that same success, that same discipline and that same consistency. So lead from the front and lead by example. Um, that's, that's one of the biggest things because you can tell someone till you're blue in the face what to do, but ultimately showing them is, is really what's going to um, be, be best and, and most beneficial. Okay, but going back to what I said earlier that posting on social media is not what makes you money. And what she's claiming right here is that even if she never trained anyone, if she never communicated with anybody on her team, those teammates should still be able to be successful if they just see what she's doing on Instagram and they copy her social media habits. Excuse me, what? You don't get paid to post on social media. What are you talking about? Okay, um... Ooh, this is a good one. Non-negotiables when you are working corporate job and money at the same time. Do you want me to take this since I was that girl? Yes. So you guys, I was that girl, okay? I had a corporate job that I had to be at at 8 a.m. every single day. I woke up at 6, you know, I was in the shower at 6.30. I was out of my house by 7.45. I was in my office at 8, and I usually got home between 7.30 and 8 o'clock at night. Um, so I understand the struggle, but I had to make short-term sacrifices. And I, I'll be honest with you, because I was so routine during that time, when I left my corporate job, I almost had too much time. And I felt like I didn't know what to do with that time. And someone wanted to go to lunch and someone wanted to do this. And, and I lost that routine in my life that was so, so, so important to me. Okay. So some of the sacrifices that I made during those eight months were number one, I didn't go to the gym. Okay. So that was like a luxury for me. And to be honest with you, I was like, I will be fat for the next eight months or one year, because after that, I'm going to be able to take a 10 AM berries class. Okay. I literally said that. And then I made that come true. Um, but every single night when I got home from work, 7.30, 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock, I was running potential calls. I was running training calls every single night. I would be on the side of my computer eating my dinner and still training, okay? Um, I can, I, was, can I say something too, you guys? Because you guys, a lot of you know Brittany as the Brittany today, right? But in 2017, when we started this business, I remember this so specifically. I texted her on a Friday. I'm like, let's go out in the city this 
this week and this, that. And she's like, Al, it is end of month. I'm not leaving my computer until I hit my rank and all my girls hit their rank. And it was in those moments that I'm like, damn, like sacrifice is really real, but it totally pays off. It is short-term sacrifice for that long-term gain. And that's who you want to be surrounding yourself with. The people that are like, no, we'll grab drinks and like, you know, what, what, what we next can, year. but now we have to get to work. So yes, I just had to add that in there. No, a hundred percent. And like, you know, I gave up like going out on a Friday night with my friends or on a Saturday night and being hung over the next day and not getting anything done. Like those just, those things, like I said, and the question before, those were not aligning with where I was trying to go, you know? And I think like, I really want to give credit to like having a good partner in this who, you know, was kind of like, okay, I'm down to just stay in with you for the next year and just work and hustle because that's going to get us where we want to go. And sometimes I feel like when we date somebody who, or, you know, our husband or whoever it is, like, isn't understanding our goals, it can make it that much harder for us. Cause they're like, you're always on your phone you know like you never want to go out and that can make it difficult um but the other thing guys is like stop watching tv I was just like an hour ago out with a potential person here in Charleston and she was telling me she works all day long and she you know doesn't have time for the business I'm like listen don't watch tv anymore that was something that I gave up everybody watches Netflix at night I literally would fall asleep with my phone on my face every single night and I would wake up in the morning and start all over again so don't watch tv you're gonna maybe stop working out you're going to stop going out you're going to stop drinking stop being hung over and use all of that time and all of that energy to build 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 make the sacrifice and it will like be so much more worth it for you in the end she literally just recommended not exercising not socializing and not relaxing as the way to be successful is this a joke like has she ever heard of burnout this might be the worst advice i've ever heard i actually just came across this graphic a couple of days ago i'll post it right here and i feel like it aligns perfectly with this point and it resonated with me so much this is from the account liz and molly and it's showing that working hard doesn't mean that you're going 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 24 7 non-stop hard work can look like taking care of yourself, exercising, eating well, sleeping well, incorporating downtime into your daily routine so that you don't burn out. I mean, personally, I'm learning this lesson pretty hard right now. Since jumping into doing YouTube full time, it is really easy for me to feel compelled to work all day every day because there's always something to be done. My workplace is 10 steps from my living space where I'm supposed to be relaxing. And I've really had to learn how to give myself boundaries. Lately, I like to work from eight to four. I will work out from four to five, I'll take a shower. And then after five o'clock, I'm done. That is my time to do whatever I want to do with it. Sometimes AJ and I will go out. Sometimes I'll be really motivated to kind of get ahead on work for the next day. Sometimes I will sit on the couch and I will be there until I go to bed. And that's okay too. That's the balance that I've had to find. And that's how I prevent myself from burning out. I'm also going to link a study below that concludes that people who work 55 hours per week had a 13% greater risk of a heart attack and were 33% more likely to suffer a stroke compared to those who just worked 35 to 40 hours a week. There are scientific studies backing up the fact that working all of the time is not healthy for you. This toxic hustle culture that's perpetuated so heavily in MLMs could have really dangerous effects. And it's important to understand that it is not healthy to push yourself past your limits. And it's not healthy to deprive yourself of a proper work-life balance. And the fact that they are claiming that that is the kind of work ethic you need to have to have a shot at making good money in Mon 8, that's a huge red flag. I love that, Brit. Just to add, and it goes hand in hand with what we were talking about before, with the whole um, having motivation and whatnot. I love like giving real life examples because I feel like that's how I understand and relate better. When girls tell me like, I'm not motivated, I'm not motivated. And I straight up say, I'm like, are you motivated to go to your nine to five every day and sit in traffic for two hours and get told what to do? I'm sure you're not motivated to do that. But you do it because you need to pay the bills because your family is depending on it. Okay. Are you always motivated to deal with your child when maybe you're sick or you're tired? No, but there are kids and they need us. So that's when discipline comes in. That's when, okay, I know what I have to do and I have to do it. So keep that in mind and either use it on yourself or use it on your team. When it comes to the whole, I'm not motivated. I honestly, I despise that, that question. When they ask like, but how do you do to get up in the morning? That's something I can't tell you. Like if you don't have the own willingness and discipline and desire to be better and do better enough to wake you up in the morning and start working. No one else is going to give you that. 
Okay. And then going back to what Brittany was saying, like, yes, those sacrifices, you need to remember it's short term, whether your short term is uh, your short term is a year or three years, but it's going to pay off. And I 150% agree that when you do this full time and you have all the time in the world, sometimes it bites us in the butt because you literally, you're like, I have all day. Like, what am I going to do it? Versus I have one hour in the morning, two hours at night. Let me be intentional about what I'm doing. Okay. Let me not scroll for three hours and stalk all the SCDs. Maybe let me get inspiration from one and let me get to work. Let me do my follow-ups. At the beginning, it's going to be hard. When you have another job, it's going to be so hard because you're spreading yourself so thin. But that's when you need to get real with yourself and say, okay, where do I want to be in a year and in three years? If in three years, I want to be going to a 10 a.m. Barry's class, I'm going to either have to give up working out or work out at four in the morning. Okay, so it's just being very raw and real with yourself. And that is usually going to get you all the answers you need when it comes to this business. Here's something that I just noticed. The original question was, quote, what are the non-negotiables when you are working a corporate job and monate at the same time? Notice how this person did not in any way imply that they wanted to quit their corporate job to pursue monate full time. But somehow that's the direction that all of these women took it in. To me, it seems like the person was just asking, hey, I'm a busy woman. I got a job. I'm doing this on the side. What are the things I need to be prioritizing for my monate business in the limited time I have? And they all took it in this direction of like, grind now, relax later, short-term effort, long-term reward. You need to make sacrifices, but that's not what she asked. They actually completely missed the question entirely. They made the assumption that her goal was to quit her job to do Monate full-time in the future. But why are they assuming that? All of this advice about working nonstop was probably less than helpful for that person that asked the question. <laughs> she was asking, how can I balance these things? And they basically said, you don't get to. There is no such thing as balance in this business. It is 100% work 100% of the time. Which again, is one of these moments where I'm like, how are people not running away from this opportunity because none of what they're saying convinces me that this is something I would like to be involved in. So far, all I've learned is that recruiting is essential. Your paycheck relies on everybody else and you never get a break. No, thank you. And one other thing I want to add, because I honestly like love the vibe that we're on right now is like surrounding yourself with the right people. How Allie was saying, like, I look at Joe waking up at four o'clock in the morning and going to work out at five. And like that inspires me and that motivates me. I look at Allie and all of the things that she does and the mindset that she has and the energy that she always shows up with that inspires me. So a lot of like what, what we're answering here is like getting around the right people and looking at the right people and then learning how to model those behaviors. You know, I look at everybody and I try to pull from them. I'm like, you do this great. I'm going to start doing that. You do this great. I want to start showing up like that. Um, and I think that like, that's like the best example that you can be for your team is just by pulling from so many other great leaders. I want to answer, um, Dailies. I think that's the question. Um, that's your name, how you pronounce your name. Because moms ask me this all the time. And, you know, guys, being a mom is a sensitive subject. You don't ever want to judge another mother. Like, we don't have a handbook to being a good mom. But I'm glad you included your daughter's age. That was going to be my first question. Because when I started, a lot of moms from the outside in probably said that I wasn't a good mom. I have videos to prove it. I would sit to work for three to four hours with Bianca. And Mateo would sleep for two. He would watch cartoons for 30 minutes. He would eat his little ice pop for another 30. And when I started this business, he was six months. And right now you feel like she's just watching you, but she's not going to remember. I promise you, my son does not remember the first. He, I started when he was six months. The first year when all I did was work, work, work. He has no memory of that. And I know some of you may agree or disagree. I'm telling you my experience because you ask me, it's worth it now. It's better for you to be on your phone when your daughter is five months than to be missing throughout her elementary, middle school, and high school years. Okay, so that's my advice when it comes to kids. Also, now that he's older, what I do is dedicated time. You know, he's four now, so I can talk to him. Right now, it's work time. And right now, it's mommy and Mateo time. Right before this call, I was laying in bed with him. No phone. When, when it's work time, he just came in and I said, you have to go. Mommy's working. So include your family, include your husband, your kids, 
but definitely don't feel guilty about being the perfect mother because number one, no one is perfect. And number two, if you're making sacrifices to give your family a better life in the, f- in, in the future, that's not a bad thing. Okay, but again, that's not the question. The original question was asking, how do you balance it all? And how do you get over the mom guilt and the fact that you're prioritizing Monate over your child? And she just went down the whole, it'll pay off one day route. And that's not what she asked. Why are we always assuming that people want to do Monate full time in the future? Didn't we already cover the fact that you need likely at least 60 people on your team to make it to a level in the company where you are making a full time income? Didn't we already cover that less than 1% of people ever actually get there. This whole narrative of sacrificing now to get what you want in the future, that's not a common path for most people in this company. Most people are just asking, how do I balance it? How do I incorporate it into the life that I'm already living? And it's kind of baffling to me that they will take the questions and they will twist them and redirect them around to whatever point they're trying to drive home the most. But again, I guess it's not that baffling to me because they want everyone to kind of shoot for the stars and to shoot for those really, really high ranks because in the end, that's what makes these people the most money. And like, I can add to that. Like, I don't have kids, but I grew up with a working mom and my mom is such a badass, you guys. Like my mom is a boss and I feel like I've pulled so much of who I am from my mom and like watching my mom work and raise a family and be independent. Like that's how she always raised me. Sorry if there's any guys on this call, but my mom would always be like, it's good to love a man, never to be a... No, it's good to love a man, never to need a man. Okay. And now here I am growing up like be your own sugar daddy, everybody. (laughs) But seriously, for your daughter to watch you, you know, be independent, make your own money, run a business. That's a good thing. That is a good, good thing for your kids to see. That's going to inspire your kids to want to be entrepreneurs too. So if I were you, I would just kind of flip that script. She's going to be like, my mom's a boss. You can still be a hardworking woman, an incredible mom, and a great role model for your kids without being in an MLM. I'm sure a lot of you watching right now have a lot of love and respect for your parents, even though they worked a traditional job. In fact, you can still be all of those things and not work at all. Being a stay-at-home mom is absolutely a full-time job and it deserves respect as well. It feels like they're insinuating that the only way to be a good mom is to join a pyramid scheme and to spend all of your free time, the time that you would normally be spending with your kids outside of your normal work hours dedicated to making your Monate business work when the odds are stacked against you and the likelihood of you making money in this business is slim to none. It's mind blowing to me. I, I I love I love all of this. I'm so grateful that you all hopped on. I think we should leave with one question that hopefully will add some I don't want to say motivation because we just talked about how, you know, motivation is not something to rely on, but maybe just something that um, can inspire you guys. But someone asked um, that they just said, I'm feeling really stuck. How do I feel unstuck in this business? And uh, for those of you that I haven't met before, I was at the same rank MMM for 27 months in a row. And then in one month I hit AED, ED and SED. Okay. So I know what it feels like to feel stuck at a rank, stuck in my mindset, all of those things. So my biggest thing that I can tell you guys is get off this call and go listen to an episode from Real AF, which is how to deal with the highs and lows with um, Andy Frisella. It is MF CEO, his podcast. I listened to that like literally 60 days straight, but you guys have to put in the work even when you don't want to. Okay. You have to stay disciplined. Don't run this business based off of emotions or based off what you want to do. No, no. Because half the things that I do on a daily basis, I do not want to actually do them, right? But you have to find the motivation, the discipline within yourself to get yourself to do them. Um, And you have to trust the process and practice patience. You know, Brittany's journey is much different than my journey. My journey from Joe's uh, journey is much different. Don't compare yourself to other people. Put your blinders on, put your head down and really, really get to work. Okay. Um, So that's my little tidbit. Maybe you guys want to end it with, with what you guys would recommend. 
She was at the same rank for 27 months. Let that sink in. Obviously her point is, I was stuck and I got out of it, so you can too. But let's keep in mind that she was stuck at a rank with a median annual income of $68,000. That's not a terrible place to be stuck. That's still a pretty dang good annual income and that in my opinion would be worth justifying staying in the company for that long even though you're not progressing upwards. Because at that point you're most likely not losing a ton of money by staying in. But the person who asked this question had her whole name in her username. It is very, very easy to find these people's ranks if you have their full name. And I looked it up and the person who asked that question who is feeling stuck, she is at the associate market builder rank. That is rank three out of 11. And the median annual income of that rank is $3,385. So I'm sorry, but being stuck at MMM in the top 1% of the company is not the same thing as being being stuck at the bottom of the company, probably spending just as much money to stay there as you are making back. That poor woman is probably sitting on the other end of the Zoom call like, are you kidding me? I should have to expect to sit here and stick it out for another two years before I can expect to rank up? If I were her, I would be exiting out of the Zoom call and be closing my account immediately because it is not worth it to be working that hard, not seeing any results, and then a top earner in the company being like, oh yeah, that's normal. Excuse me? No, it's not. It is not normal to work for years at a time for little or no pay. And the only reason that this top leader is advising you to stick it out is because somewhere, someone in the organization really needs you on their team to help their numbers do better. Um, corporate always says, like Stuart and Wright always say to us, like as SEDs, when you guys feel stuck, just go build a block, you know? And I think that that's such great advice because our business is so simple. And that's what we tell our new girls, blah, 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 go, out and build, go out and build a block, you know? And if we're telling our teams to do it, we should be able to do it too. So if you're feeling stuck, that's what I encourage you guys to do. Get back to your basics, go build a block, try to like hit MMP, you know, for the first time, bring on two market partners and get that extra thousand GV. Um, and just go back to what you did when you first started. She's saying, as SEDs, the CEO of this company tells us that when we're feeling stuck, we just need to go build a block. This term building a block means that you get four VIP customers and you recruit one person. And this is something that people who just joined Monate are highly, highly incentivized to do in the first two to three months of joining. But let's think about how ridiculous that advice is for a second. Oh, you're feeling stuck? Go find some customers. Go recruit some people. Like no sh Sherlock, what do you think I'm trying to do? Why do you think I'm stuck? What kind of ridiculous advice is this? I am losing brain cells minute by minute with this call. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. The most important thing, this is what I say to every person on my team. I want you guys to have fun. I want you guys to enjoy what you do. I want this to be an outlet for you, something that makes you feel good at the end of the day. So if you can take the stress out of it and the emotion out of it and just come here to to have fun and to grow yourself and to make some extra money and to build a business and to be a better person, um, I think that that's the most that we can ever ask for. How ironic is it that the woman who is telling us that all she wants is for us to just have fun in this business is the same woman who told us that you can't socialize, you can't watch TV, you can't go out with friends, you can't exercise for an entire year if you want to be successful with Monate. Okay, and I'll finish it off with number one, just remember that being stuck is a mindset. Okay, this business has taught me how powerful our mind is. Okay, so I debunked this exact Monate rep and this exact bogus stuck is a mindset thing in another video. I dedicated like an entire segment to debunking just this idea. I'm gonna link that video here. That's MLM Top Fails 24. But basically she love, love, loves to blame the fact that it's really hard to rank up on you and your mindset and that you are just lazy. And if you really wanted to rank up, you would, and that you just need to do more personal development. But also remember that your mind doesn't know like what's right and what's wrong. Your mind doesn't know if it's Monday or Friday. Your mind knows what you tell it, okay? So when you're feeling stuck, you are giving yourself those feelings, those thoughts, and those emotions. Snap out of it. What is stuck? Are you literally glued to a chair or tied to a tree? Because that's stuck. Stuck? Oh, because no one's signing up with me? What have you stopped doing? What are you not doing? Like, why are you stuck? Who told you you're stuck? 
no one told you you're stuck is a mindset because you got lazy or because you didn't see results fast enough. I always say, embrace what you're going through. Make your mess your message. What are you going through? Speak about it. Someone's going to relate to you. Like, look at Ali's story. Every time I hear it, I'm like, Jesus, you know, stuck at a rank for 27 months. She wasn't stuck. There was dues she had to pay. She was growing. She was learning. She was getting the team she needed to then triple rank in three months. How about that? That's really stuck, right? So just keep that in mind when you're feeling stuck and remind yourself you are putting yourself in that situation. You are physically tying yourself down to wherever it is that you choose to stay stuck at. No one else is holding you back. So listen to a podcast. Learn, you need to know yourself. Like what gets you hyped up? When I'm stressed out, when I'm overwhelmed, I need to go work out. I need to literally put my phone away for one or two hours. The world is not going to die without me. And just get in my groove again. Listen to a podcast. Listen to music. Have a dance party. I don't know. What do you like to do? And get back into it. But don't ever say I'm stuck because that's not actually real. That's not possible. And you're just attracting that to your business. How bold of her to be like, she wasn't stuck at that rank for 27 months. That was her choice because she wasn't working hard enough. And the girl on the call who was stuck for 27 months, she shut down, okay? She is staring blankly ahead. This kind of talk makes my blood boil because it is completely disregarding all of the things that are not within a person's control. You don't think that people want to rank up to the top super fast? You don't think they want it bad enough? You don't think they're doing everything in their power to not be at the bottom and not lose money. It is so disrespectful to blame a Monate Market partner for other people's unwillingness to join the business. Cause that's what it comes down to. Earlier in the call, she herself admitted that it's all about recruiting. So why is she simultaneously refusing to acknowledge that you can't force people to sign up? She's completely disregarding the fact that people do work really hard to recruit like she's advising to do, but it's not in their control if people sign up or not. She's pretty Pretty much saying, oh, the people that you pitched to didn't want to join the business. That's your fault. You're the failure. That's so perfect. Awesome. Joe, Britt, thank you so, so much. Thank you everyone who hopped on and tuned in tonight. We so appreciate your time and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Guys, bye guys. Thank you. What an absolute dumpster fire. If I was sitting on that call and I was hoping to hear some real advice and some really good tips, I would be rolling my eyes and leaving so disappointed. What a joke. As I said at the beginning, this is a bunch of women pretending to be the boss of something and attempting to train on things that don't make sense and quite frankly is just not good life advice. And that's why I feel like it's really important to make these kinds of videos because there was like 200 people on this call and I guarantee you that there were some people on there that were like, wow, what great advice and they're just taking everything at face value because of who it's coming from, because it's coming from someone at the top of their company who is in a position that they want to be. And that is why it's important that we have these types of videos, to watch the call, to debunk it, and to present the information in a completely different light, and to hopefully empower people to look at this information and think critically about it. There were a few questions that came up in the chat box that were not addressed. Of course, there was a time limit. They were trying to keep it under 30 minutes and they couldn't get to every question. But here's some honorable mentions that didn't get talked about that I think are still important to show. The first one is somebody asked right at the beginning, how do you properly handle answering questions about past accusations about hair loss due to our products? That question got conveniently skipped over. It was one of the very first questions in the chat box and I have no doubt that it was seen. Another question that came through said how to protect your energy from draining when you are there for your team and they don't work or take the business seriously. And then a third question I found interesting was when MPs stop posting and are not active in the chat, anymore and you have followed up with them individually, but they continue to be absent from the biz. Do you give up or keep trying? I feel like there's a fine line there. And all of these questions coupled with some that they actually did address, like how do you find motivation? How do you balance it all? I'm having a hard time. To me, these questions really send the impression that people are struggling. People are finding it very, very difficult to be successful. People feel like they're working really hard and it's still not working out for them. People are like, how do I find motivation? Or how do I motivate my team? Or when do I just give up on someone when they're wanting to quit? And I guess what I'm trying to say is a lot of these questions seem like they're coming from a place of desperation and maybe even frustration. And overall, what this call felt like to me is people expressing these frustrations gently and then having the top earners come back to them and completely dis 
disregard their experiences. You're not stuck. It's your mindset. I was there for 27 months. You just need to hustle. You need to make sacrifices. Don't work out anymore. Don't watch TV anymore. Don't go out with your friends anymore. And I personally feel like those were not effective responses. I know they probably think they killed it and they're being like so wise and so full of information. But from my perspective, they didn't validate anyone's experiences. They didn't give any real tangible advice. They didn't give you any tips or tricks. Pretty much all they said was, well, I got through it, so you should be able to. And if you can't, that's your own fault. Completely disregarding the fact that timing has something to do with it, the fact that they got in when the company was brand new, completely disregarding the fact that it is about recruiting, but statistically, it's not possible for everybody to recruit enough people to be at the top ranks. And overall, I feel like this is a very, very poorly handled call. And my goal, as always, with these types of videos is just to present the information and make you think a little bit differently about it. And I hope that I was able to achieve that. And with that, that's all that I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.